out with Olympus Reptiles today, we're going to ask the question, do you wobble? What that means is we're going to go ahead and address the spider wobble. I've addressed it in several videos, a little bit here and there, and I've answered probably 5 billion questions on it. Uh, we're going to just tackle it head on. We're going to tell you exactly what it is, what it does, what it's a problem, why it is a problem, why it isn't a problem, my thoughts on it, again, my thoughts on it are not the only thoughts on it. So, let's get started. And the way to start that, of course, is to pull out a spider. Come here, girly. This is a spider. Now. But it looks like a snake. And actually, this one is a pretty good example. Because if you look, and if you probably show down here, Kurt, his head is slightly raised. When that spider's head is slightly raised, it gets a little bit off. And it kind of has this curious look at you, like, head cock. This is like, why are you playing with me? But that's actually a little bit of the wobble. This one does a pretty decent job. It doesn't have major problems. But you see that little bit of a cocked head. What I have noticed is some of them, when you give them food, they'll actually vibrate back and forth. They get kind of excited and they get all derpy. Most of mine don't do that. What I have noticed in every single spider, to some extent or another, is the ability to do up and down is confused. We'll see if this one will do it. When you work with live animals, they don't always do what you want them to. Start wobbling. But if it starts trying to move north-south, a lot of times it'll get a little bit of confusion to it. Let's see if we get it here. Oh, there was a little bit. Well, you really can't see the head. And basically what it has trouble writing itself from that front. You know, some of them will get, there you go. See how it's kind of getting upside down, has to fix it? That's a pretty good example. Now, let me show you a more severe example. When you put them back in the cage, you tend to notice it too, because I kind of almost want to go nose first. They don't have that writing ability. They just don't have it. This one is probably what I would consider to be my worst wobbler. And again, horrible, right? Oh my god, the snake should have never been bred. What else was I doing? We should get rid of it. It should be murdered because... Really, it's fine, guys. The wobble is not nearly that big of a deal as people tend to make it out to be. And again, it's a writing thing. There it goes. See, it doesn't have its head down, so it's having a hard time figuring it out. They're not tree snakes, so they don't do this a lot. That's your wobble. Now, watch what happens. Put it on the ground. Figures it out. No problems. We're going to move just fine now. We're going to go try to do it high. We're going to be a normal snake. This thing eats perfect. It sheds perfect. It's bred perfect. It does everything extremely well. As a matter of fact, the offspring it had... None of them even showed as severe of a wobble as this one shows. And this is what I would probably classify as a, as a medium wobble. If I had a severe wobbler, I, I won't breed those. But anything else, why is that? I will. And here's what it comes down to. It comes down to quality of life for the snake, right? Do you think this snake's quality of life suffers? That's the question you have to answer. That's the moral question we have to come to. And I'm going to tell you, it eats fine, it sheds fine, it breeds fine, it exhibits no pain, no issue whatsoever in its cage. It doesn't have any problems. Stay up on my table. So why in the world do I think that its quality of life is suffering? It's simply not. It's not suffering. So what is the wobble? Why do spiders have it? Well, there are several genes out there that do display the wobble. Why are you trying to, like, go down there? Let's not go down there. Spider's one of them. Spider's probably the most famous one for it having the wobble. And all of it is a neurological tick, I guess you'd say, that's connected to the genetics. Why it's connected, I don't know. Can you breed it out? Nope. A lot of people have tried. You're not going to breed it out. It's not going to happen. Get back in there. So, it's going to be there in every spider. And then the first spider, the one import, and they're all related. And whenever it passes on, the spider gene it passes that with it. I have heard that blackhead may mask it. So if you bring spider to the blackhead and you get spider to blackhead, you may not show the wobble then. But then I think when you breed that spider to blackhead and you get just regular spiders, guess what? Wobble. So you're going to have it if you're going to work with spiders. So then you have to make that decision. Do I want to work with spider? Well, I just showed you two really good reasons why you would. A spider is very, very pretty. Can't show you that one. It's kind of like, it's banging. 
So, <laughs> sometimes that happens. Active breeding season. We don't plan this. But I, I like the spider. Do you have I'm a, a an exantic spider? I do have an exantic spider. Good call, Kurt. See how he's looking today. He's got a little bit of wobble. They all do. You know, but they all have great quality of life. They've all been good eaters for me. I have never had a spider give me a major problem. And I find them beautiful. If I thought they suffered from a quality of life issue, then I would be on board with not breeding them. I don't think they do. I think their quality of life is spot on. I think they can add a lot into combinations. They make very beautiful snakes. I don't think it bothers them a bit. You know, I would equate it to, you know, a very small thing. And if you think about it, we as humans all have small things. We don't tell people they shouldn't breed because they suffer from, you know, certain things, right? We don't do that. Uh, and yes, we could control that population and we could never breed spider and never have spider wobble, but we also wouldn't have spider pattern. We wouldn't have spiders. So it's kind of a catch-22 on what you really want to do or what you think. Me, I obviously choose to breed spiders. Now, they've been pretty much banned in Europe. They're not banned to keep, they're not banned to own, but they're banned to have at a reptile show. So you cannot show a spider in Europe. Can't do it, can't take it to a show, can't sell it on a table, at least in England, I believe. There's a little bit of wobble, getting that upside down, confused. See, he does fine. He's coming around to me, which isn't good for the camera. There we go. We're going to keep breeding them. Now, does that mean if you choose not to, let's say you go, you know what? That wobble, that's too much for me. I'm not going to breed anything with a wobble. That's your right. That's your choice. And I'm not going to sit here and say you're wrong. You're not wrong. I'll tell you you're not wrong. I'll also tell you I'm not wrong for choosing to breed them. It's going to come down to personal choice and personal preference. You know, and the only way they'll ever stop being bred is to stop being a market for them. And then, I mean, if there wasn't a market for them, even I would have to slow down on breeding them because I could only breed the ones that I wanted to keep, right? I couldn't breed 4,000 spiders. I mean, what the hell would I do with them all? So it would slow it down tremendously. Would I still make spiders? You bet. You bet I'd make spiders because you're not who I want. You're who I want. I moved you over here. Spider is key for what I want to do. It's a key ingredient. There you go. Spider. It's it's amazing. So we'll keep working with it. Others won't. And that's fine. I will say this. If you choose to breed spiders, and if you choose to sell spiders, okay, if you're selling to somebody that knows about the spider wobble, cool beans, you're good to go. If you're selling to somebody who's brand new and isn't aware of it, I think you have a responsibility to share it with them. I think you have a responsibility to say, hey, look, yeah, this is a spider. If you know, are you familiar with the spider wobble? Explain to them what it is, what they're looking for, what it does, why it does it. I also like to explain if they're in your some lethal combos. You can't go sticking spider to champagne. I let them know about the spider to spider possible issues those sort of things. I have that conversation. That way they know what they're getting into and then they don't down the road feel like, hey, I bought this snake and I didn't know what I was getting and now I'm pissed. You know, I want them to have full disclosure on the animal they're getting. They deserve that. Your customer deserves that. So give it to them. But otherwise, I say go for it. You want to breed spider? Breed some spider. If you don't, don't. But if you're going to kick this out because you're going to say, hey, it has that wobble we better never breed those, because they ain't wobbles, right? Let me tell you something. Hidden Gene Walnut has some issues. Better not breed these, okay? Let's not do that, because they're known to have a little bit of a wobble and tick. And some of combos, right? So take that off your table while we're at it. And if we're going to start taking things off the table because of known possible genetic issues, here's another one. Better take him off our table. Can't make these guys. You know why? Because banana is a sex link gene. So that's almost kind of a genetic faux pas right there. A little bit of a way. And also it's black pastel. And the super form of nose to have a kinking and duck bill. Probably should throw caramel out. You better never breed a caramel. Caramel kinks. Uh, desert is gone because of the females not going to lay. I don't have any deserts or caramels, but I don't work with them. But if you're going to say if it has any genetic imperfection, then it shouldn't be bred. All of those plus caramel plus hidden gene woman, you know, it should all come off. As a matter of fact, while we're at it, I mean, if we're going to really do that, right, we might as well do it whole hog, 
Where in the world did I put you? When you move things around, there you are. This one. Oh, you took a poop I'm going to have to clean. Thank you. Take these off the table, right? <laughs> you rolled in the poop too. Thank you so much. That can't, can't do those anymore. Can't do those anymore. We also better take these off the table. And you're probably saying, why? These both contain lesser. Of course, this is a super lesser, and you can see a lot of times on a super lesser, the eyes are a little bit larger. That's a genetic issue. This is also a lesser super pastel, but if lesser causes that, right, a genetic issue, we probably shouldn't be breeding lesser at all. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is we vilify the spider. We vilify it. And nobody talks about these other ones. I don't know why. Probably because the wobble is a more visual thing that you do see that causes problems. I get that. I see what you're trying to do. Don't you even think about it. I, I get that wholeheartedly. But the fact is that all those genes, they all carry certain traits with them, some of which are things that may not be as desirable, yet we still work with them constantly. You know, you know I'm not going to quit work with champagne. I'm not going to quit work with lesser. I'm not going to quit work with black pastel and banana. And I'm definitely not going to quit working with spider. So as we talk about all this, you know, and again, I understand this is different than this. I get it. I do. But is that not showing an imperfection, just like Spider Wobble can? And the whole time, have you seen that zebra bee do anything that would make you go, Oh my God, there is something wrong with the spider gene. All right, I will get off my soapbox now. Otherwise, this will get really long. And I will leave just by saying, <laughs> I got popped there, I did. That this is a personal choice. You make your decision. But if you make a decision to breed spider, cool. If you make a decision to not breed spider, then I would say that's fine too. But do me a favor. Don't go there and just lamb blast the people that do. I don't think that's fair to them. As long as they're making an educated decision, and they're educating their customers on what's happening, then I don't see a problem with breeding spider. Kurt, you got anything you want to add? No. Nope. Nothing at all? Well, oh, just the, the reason why th that spider has that problem is because there's only been one found in the wild. Right. And it had it. It had it. So you're not, it's not something that breeders did or anything else. You know, and I've seen other spiders that are not, sorry, other ball pythons that aren't spiders that also have a wobble. So you're going to have that. Here's the other thing, guys. You ever decide to grow a YouTube channel and it starts getting big and your fiance is like question girl and worries that Hey, you know, you're starting to grow. We get all these phone calls and things now. Maybe you're going to get a little too big for your britches, britches and get overconfident and become an egotistical dick. Spend a little time picking up snake poop with your hands, and that will always bring you back down to earth, right? Yeah, nothing like cleaning crap with your bare hands to do that. All right, I'm going to go off here so I can go wash my hands now because that was a little bit of a juicy one, and we will catch you guys later.